Hello everybody. Today we're going to be doing the buoyancy lab and this is a copy of the handout that you have on Schoology in your folder and you need to print it out so you can do this. Now what we're going to be doing is looking at the buoyancy of various ob objects, the buoyant force that acts on it and whether they sink or float. Then of course as you can see on the data table there's a list of the objects that we're going to be using. And I have already taken a Newton scale and measured the weight of each of those objects in air. I just thought that would save some, some time for all of us if I went ahead and did that. And I'll show you what it looks like in a minute because we have to use the same Newton scale to measure the weight of the object when it's in the water. Okay? Because if you know the weight in air and you know the weight in water, the weight in the water should be less than the weight in the air because of the buoyant force acting from the water. So if we subtract the weight of the um, uh, object in the water from the, its weight in the air, the difference will be the amount of buoyant force exerted on the object by the water. Okay. So, if you'll pause it for a minute and just write down those weights of each object in air, just as, they sh as they're shown, then we'll get started. Okay? So you can pause it now and write them down. Okay, now we're going to first make predictions about what we think of each of the objects and what will happen when they're placed in the water. Will they sink or will they float? So I'm going to show you each object and you decide and write it down. Now it doesn't matter if you're right or wrong at all on this, okay? So you put down what you think, all right? Then we'll look at the actual um, uh, observation of whether it sinks or floats and see if we were right or wrong. It doesn't matter if we were right or wrong, it's what we learned from it, okay? So let's take a look at the objects. All right. The first object I have is a cork stopper, and you all have seen cork before, so this is just a cork stopper that you use in a flask or a bottle, all right? The second object is a rock, so I found a rock and tied a string on it so we could weigh it and stuff, and uh, we'll be putting that in the water. And then we have a plastic cube just a cube of plastic, okay? Just ordinary plastic, kind of boring. And I'll put that, make a line out of them. Then we have the steel cube. Here it is. This is a steel cube. All right. It's kind of heavy. Yeah, you can tell. It's kind of heavy. All right. And next we have a wooden cube. Not, not very heavy at all. Okay, a wooden cube. And we have a piece of styrofoam. This is a styrofoam ball. All right. And if you look close, you can see the white of the styrofoam poking through the, the black paint that's on it. And then we also have a rubber stopper. Again, like you would use in a flask or a bottle. Just an ordinary rubber stopper. And we have an aluminum cube, finally. A cube made out of aluminum, or aluminium, as they say in England. All right? All right. Now, I want you to predict if they will float or if they will sink. So I'll hold each one up again, and you decide sink or float, write it down in the box in the first column after the type of object. So here's the cork. Is that going to sink? Or is it going to float? Here's the rock. Heavy rock. Is that going to sink? Or is it going to float? Here's the piece of plastic. Is that going to sink? Or is it going to float? I guess it would help if I had it in front of the camera like that. Okay. Here's the big cube of steel. Oh, 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 heavy. All right. Here's the wood. A lightweight piece of wood. Okay. Here's the styrofoam. Just 
a little styrofoam ball. Here is the rubber stopper. Now that might be the tricky one because some rubbers do float, some rubbers don't. So we're going to find out, aren't we? Okay. And then here is the aluminum cube again. Has some heft to it. All right, I hope you've written down whether you think it floats or sinks. Doesn't matter right or wrong, we're gonna learn about it, okay? So now, let's actually go through each one and see what happens, okay? All right, so we'll start with the cork. If I take the cork and place it in the water, oh, look at that, boy, does it float. Floats pretty good, doesn't it? Okay, now here's the fun part. We're going to weigh the cork floating on the water, and this is going to be a little difficult because it is so lightweight, it barely registered a weight the first time. This is the Newton scale we're going to be using, and notice that it is zeroed to the bottom edge of that indicator because the indicator itself is rather thick, so I zeroed it to the bottom of the indicator, so always read from the bottom edge. All right, so now here's what we're going to do. I'm going to put the cork on the indicator, let it float, and just barely take up the slack. All right, and if we read it, I can't, I'm going to have to turn it to read it, guys. I'm sorry. Basically, I get zero because it's floating so well. So let's just put down zero for the weight of the object in the water. Because think about it, it is sitting right on top of the surface. Very little is submerged. So we're going to put zero newtons for that. Okay? All right, so there was the cork. All right, now let's try the rock. Let's see what you thought and what it actually does. You ready? Whoo! Oh, look at that. It sunk like a rock. Ha, 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 ha. Was that bad, guys? Was that a bad joke? It sunk like a rock. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, so anyway, now let me put the. Well, if I can get it on here, let me put the Newton scale on the string. Now it went all the way to the bottom, so that's what we have to let it do. Well, actually, we don't have to let it go all the way to the bottom. But here, I'm going to read off what it says on the scale. All right, and I'm looking at the left side where it says Newtons, and this says about 0 0.60 Newtons, okay? 0 0.60 Newtons of force. All right, so we write that down for the rock, the weight of the object in water, 0 0.60 Newtons, okay? Now, let's try the plastic cube. Does it sink? Or does it float? This is going to be interesting because I'm not sure. Some plastics won't float. Some will. Look at that. It didn't float. What do you think of that? All right. Now, there is a buoyant force acting on it, just not big enough to support its weight. So let's see if we can figure out what it is. All right. Let's put the Newton scale on the string. Okay. Now submerge it fully. And we're going to read off that it measures from the bottom edge of the indicator. I get point, well, let me see. I get about point zero five. It's not all the way to point one even. It's about halfway to point one. So that would be point zero five. So write down point zero five. All right, for the plastic cubes weight in water, point zero five newtons. Okay, next on the list is the steel cube. All right, I think we all know what this one's going to do. All right, if I, and I don't want to let it go because I don't want it to crack the bottom of the, of the beaker. So I'm just going to let it go like that. That's the safest thing to do. Obviously, it's not going to float. It's going to sink. Okay, so now let's put the Newton scale on the string. Well, thought I had it. There it goes. Okay, and submerge it in the water. And we'll see what its weight is in the water. 
Okay, with the buoyant force acting on it, its weight appears to be about 1.2 newtons. All right, 1.2 newtons. All right, so let's take that out and we'll write down on our papers for the steel, we're going to write down 1.2 zero newtons because it didn't look like it went past the point two mark at all so there is some buoyant force there just not a lot it just can't support the weight of it okay now the next one is the wooden cube this is going to be interesting let's see what happens here you ready oh look at that it floats how about that how many of you predicted that Okay, so now we're going to take the scale and see what its weight when it's floating is. So that hopefully we can determine the buoyant force acting on it. All right, hang on. I'm trying to get the string separated so I can put it through this loop. There we go. All right, so now we set it down in there and we just take up the tension just enough to get a measure of the weight while it's floating. Okay, and I'm getting about point, oh, it won't stay still very well. I'm getting about point oh seven, point zero seven. It's not quite to point one, but it's, uh, it looks like it's about point oh seven, point zero seven newtons. So there is quite a bit of buoyant force acting on that little block. All right, next is the styrofoam ball. What do you think? Oh, looky there. Yep, it floats. All right, so let's get the hook in there. Well, see if I can hook it. Yeah, there we go. All right, now we don't want to pull it up out of the water. We just want to pull up enough to put some tension in the string and still have it floating on the water. Okay, now this one may not read anything at all because I tell you it barely has any weight outside of the water. And I'm getting basically about I'm getting about 0 .03, 0 .03. It's not even halfway to point 0.1. So everybody put down 0 .03 newtons for the weight of the styrofoam in water. Two more left, rubber stopper. Ooh, now this is the one I've been waiting for. Will it float or won't it? Some rubber will float, um, some won't. It, uh, it just depends on the kind of rubber it is, the density. So let's see. Nope, not this one. Not this one. All right, so let's put Put it on the spring scale now. I can get the string loop to separate. There we go. Alrighty. Okay, so as it's submerged, if we read it off, oh, it looks to me like it's saying 0.1 right on the nose. Look at that. I don't know about you guys, but it looks like 0.1 right on the nose. So 0.10 since we're doing two decimal places. 0 0.10, okay? 0 0.10 newtons for the rubber stopper. Last one, the aluminum cube. And what do we think is gonna happen here? Well, I don't know about you guys, but I think it's gonna sink. And I'm not gonna let it go because I don't want it to crack the bottom. Whew, it does make a loud clink though, doesn't it? All right, so no, it doesn't float. Now. Yeah. Let's get that little sucker out. Get it on the string. Submerge it. And let's see, I'm getting about, uh, I'm getting about 0.28. About 0.28, not quite to 0.3 on the scale. So about 0.28. All right, a little more than halfway, whoops, oh well. A little more than halfway to point three though. All right, 
So 0.28 newtons. All right, so now everybody should have the first four columns filled in. You should have down your prediction for sinker float. You should have down what it actually did. You should have down the weight of the object in air and the weight of the object in water that we just measured. Now, how do we find the buoyant force? We take the weight in air minus the weight in water to get the buoyant force. So you just subtract the two. So, for example, on the cork stopper, you're going to say 0 0.05 newtons minus zero equals whatever the buoyant force is. You write it right there in the blank, okay? Do that for all of them. And then I want you to, to, to look at it and study it for a minute. Then you're going to do the analysis right down here, okay? Now, you just follow the instructions on the analysis. Guys, it's not difficult. And in fact, I just explained number one on the analysis for you. Now you can do the rest, okay? It's not very difficult. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.